اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الانبياء المرسلين الحمد لله we're very fortunate uh, I feel very honored to be here to, to really save my soul and in the process save a couple of people around me this is how it goes this is what Allah tells us قو أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا and so our motive for doing anything is always really we're just trying to save ourselves uh, and try to attain as best a place in the next life as we can and uh, this is uh, this is uh, these are realities that we are unaware of uh, just as the reality of making dhikr because Allah says Remember me and I will remember you. But we know in our Aqidah that none of us are allowed to do anything except Allah allows us to be able to do that. And so what state should our heart be when we know that we've been chosen to make remembrance of Allah? And what have any of us really done except for just a moment we we plead to Allah. This is the request that we give when we intend to remember Allah. And how many times have we intended to remember Allah and we have not been allowed to remember Allah? In fact, how many times have we tried to remember Allah and find ourselves in the middle of a dhikr session <laughs> thinking about other than God? What an what a unfortunate place to be. And sometimes we intend to not remember God which is our dunyawi affairs, and we're forced to remember Allah. That's called problems in life. <laughs> Most of which we're all familiar with, aren't we? We're familiar with this in which when we have gone to, knowingly, we have gone to the world in some way. And then we say, oh, subhanAllah. We say, oh, astaghfirullah. I hope you say that. There's other equivalents like, oh my gosh. It should be, oh my God, what's gosh? <laughs> SubhanAllah. Uh, so, so it's really such a blessing for us to, to be here and to remember Allah. And uh, that's what these nights then become about. These nights become a moment in which we recognize that we are not even truly in control of our remembering of God. You know, it's just, a t this is the, the whole remembering Allah process is really just acknowledging and recognizing how much we are as needy people, how little I am in control of my remembrance of God. You know, just that surrender to God to say, oh Allah, that don't even, that don't even turn me away from remembrance of you. Because if I turn away from the remembrance of you, then where else am I going to go? Where else are we going to go if we can't, uh, if we're removed from this place? And that's why anytime we turn ourselves away from, from God, anytime we, we turn ourselves away from Allah, Allah brings us back. And then, we, and then if we turn away again, and then Allah brings us back. But if we keep turning away, there comes a point where Allah leaves us. And every one of us, has experienced that. That's incredible, isn't it? Every single one of us has experienced a moment where we, where Allah brought us back and brought us back. We, in our, you know, we can't even understand the audacity that we have with God. You know, it's, it's quite a struggle, isn't it? To know that we at times turn away and Allah's bringing us back. So this is why the more the dhikr we do, the more easier this becomes and the more peaceful this moment becomes. That's why that moment where we just say, Allah, 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 Allah. We keep saying, Allah, Allah, Allah. Everything, the whole body, all of it starts to align in, the, in one direction. But other than that, you know, if we don't do that, we have one side, the heart wants to go to God, but the mind wants to go to here, or the mind wants to go to Allah, but the heart wants to go and, you know, make some money or text her back or whatever the affairs that we're getting involved in. And we find that the human being then 
starts to get stretched inwardly. One side wants to go here, one side wants to go there. And that eventually becomes a contradiction within because I know I was not made for Netflix. I know that. Knowing it while I pick up the remote and go, Ch I know I'm going to have... And you know what they call this? This is called a cacophony. This is called an ugly sound that's made within because the opposite of harmony, the harmony is like when things are in place. This is another word for other and for beauty. This is harmony, right? And, and, and so when everything aligns, that's why when, when you say Allah or Astaghfirullah, 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 everything starts to align. You become a harmony within. That's why the peace arrives. Because finally everything is just in one place. But otherwise, we, we turn away and one part saying this, but the other part saying that, and we're having this problem within. And this is why it's so important we just continue to make dhikr, continue to make dhikr, continue to capitalize on these nights to make those changes that allow us to come back. And when we come back, ultimately, we take our will back into willing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills for us. And if we can want what Allah wants for us, that's when we arrive in that place beyond just saying Allah, Allah, Allah. But rather everything else we do is all aligned with that. So when I go to work, or when I go here, and when I go there, everything has in that place a, a, a complete direction to God. Because whether we like it or not, the body and everything is seeking Allah, Allah. You know, this is why it's so profound, like the you know, if you, uh, the more and more you become familiar, like Sidi was saying, you, you start to experience and you start to come to know how your body reacts to dhikr. You know what happens to your cells in that moment? You know, and the whole body is, is, this is what it was made for. Just to say Allah and to be in that place. Finally, I'm doing what I was meant to do. But if we move away from it, we start to create an agitation. And that's what the whole modern world has become now. It's just a place that everybody's agitated. So maybe we become people of, of peace. You know, one who makes peace, what that person is called? It's one who submits aslam a who are Muslim. That's what a Muslim is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to be people who, as much dhikr as we can do in our, in, in, in our, upon our tongues, and so to, to the point where it becomes a very consciousness, a very being that we're constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's how we're going to become those people of harmony and those people of complete peace, and those beacons of peace so strong, that wherever they go, they bring about peace. You look at them and you feel peace. You know, that's the aim, inshallah, to become just the place of peace. What do they call that? Dus salam. Amin tadakkuri jiranin bi bi salami, mazaj tadam an jaram al muqlatin bi dami. Is it just remembering the place of the people, of the neighbors of the place of peace, that now your tears mixed with blood uh, are remembering those people. That's the level that you and I, inshallah, we can attain. We become neighbors of Dus Salam. We become neighbors of the place of peace. What a great place to be. That, that when you get remembered, that you rock the state that produces the Qasida Buddha. You rock that state. <laughs> you know, and everybody has Qasida Buddha in their own forms. So may we be able to produce that, inshallah. By effort and effort and effort, last 10 days, just go for gold. al al ihsan right? Is the reward for excellence other than you get excellence back? Or do you think you're not going to get gold back just by going that bit extra? Of course you're going to get it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to be able to achieve that state, inshallah, by His mercy. Barakallah fi'ikum wa'alaikum 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 w